Miles and Above tonight. I will be doing another show uh, in two weeks' time for lower-rated players. Uh, all right, and uh, here another challenge comes in from Slava Lachkov, and it's 1e4, so French or Sicilian? Well, I just won the Sicilian uh, against the Sicilian the last game, so why not um, play myself in this game? Uh, right, I know what, I'm going to give the O'Kelly variation a whirl, because I feel like it's underutilised. I mean, maybe it's not as good, you know, as some of the other Sicilians out there, but, you know, that doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve its, you know, potential role on hack attack. Now, how is black supposed to play from this position? I guess just d6 here, right? I can go e6, but then I have some potentially ruinous dark squares. Hmm. What about d6? D6 looks kind of safe and straightforward, so why not go for that? Well, right, he's got h3 to stop me playing bishop g4, so why don't I just develop the bishop in the opposite direction? Like, fianchetto the bishop, if you will, to use a technical term. Okie dokie. So now... What's my opponent going to do to that? He could go a3 to simply stop my pawn from uh, pushing down the board a little bit further. Um, but he probably wisely just chooses to carry on um, improving his pieces. And bishop d3 does take a little bit of the sting out of b4. Now where do I want to develop this knight? If I play knight f6, am I worried by e5? Then I can play knight d5. I don't see any reason I should be too worried by it. Uh, then queen b3, e6, bishop e4. It's kind of a little bit annoying. Oh, okay, I like knight, f, uh, knight f6 here. I think I like knight f6. So I'm looking at the variation e5, knight d5. And then if he goes bishop e4, that's a big blunder because of knight takes c3. And if he goes queen b3, I was going to take on e5. So I'm quite happy with the way this has turned out, as my opponent has ended up going backwards in order to defend this e4 pawn. So as far as I'm concerned, that's job done for the opening, and I get to just finish my development pretty much in peace here. Hmm. Okay, bishop b1. I kind of want to flick the switch here. And go aggressive. So maybe e5. And then just look to stick a knight in on d4. Because he um, relinquished the centre a little bit by playing his knight back to d2. I feel I can try and take advantage of that. Now I'm trying to work out what I'll do if he goes knight f3 or knight b3 here. But it's all academic now as he has in fact played a3. So I kind of want to carry on aggressive, uh, with aggressive play here. So maybe knight d7 or knight h5. Looking to follow up with this move f5 in order to open up the position and get your opponent's king. One really important piece of advice I reckon is that uh, if you're looking for something active to do, you should always take a look at the pawn breaks. As they have a massive effect on the activity of both sides' pieces. And I think I'm just going to play the knight back to d7. Maybe a little bit more conservative, but I'm eyeing up coming to c5 or b6 and c4 perhaps. But more importantly, it allows me to play f5. And one thing I didn't like about putting the knight on h5 is if I go knight h5 and he takes it and I take back, then that knight might drop off to that queen on d1. All right. All right. Knight b3. If I go f5, he can take a couple of times on d4 and I just drop a pawn for not too much. So the sensible option is to take on b3 and go f5. Queen b6 is kind of interesting but I'm self-pinning my... Whoa. Uh, well I've gone down to 7 seconds. That was... Uh, how have I played so slowly? Alright, this is going to be a little bit faster. I thought that I had plenty of time here guys. Uh, panic stations. Alright, this is going to have to be the fastest 
I have ever played. I'm predicting knight takes there. Oh, he doesn't go for it. Knight in. Uh, I need to get h5 and a big attack going. This is a disaster. This is why I need the uh, two second increment. Uh oh. Ah, uh, this is all over, guys. Alright, starting to pre-move in a horrible, horrible fashion. Uh, let's take that off, take this off, take this off. Take that off. Take this off. And there goes the time. I mean, time flies when you're not paying attention. Don't you think? Um, I don't know, I feel like I was... I was really getting into a nice groove in what my plan was, but I literally didn't realise that uh, I was so short on time until I heard that, you know, warning sound that chess.com has when you drop below 10 seconds. And you know what? That was kind of embarrassing. Not gonna lie. Um, so... After winning the first game on time, losing the second game on time, let's see if we can have a game that's decided by, you know, proper on the board issues. Um, although, you know, first game I thought I played pretty well, won the exchange. I think that game was going really well as well. I was just getting into a really nice stride. That's kind of the frustrating thing. But, okay... So we have a standard Italian game position here. And I was just wondering what I was going to do with this knight. And I'm going to bring it round to g3 before castling. The idea behind this is potentially for me to gain a tempo. Uh, by not having to move the rook from f1 after castling. So I get everything there that little bit faster. I've played this way quite a few times before. It's a, it's a manoeuvre you see both in these Guco piano positions as well as in some pretty standard Roy Lopez positions. And don't really worry about this A5 move. Going to basically ignore that side of the board as we loom large on the king side. Now, do I want to go knight h4 here? Maybe he goes bishop g4. Let me think here. Knight h4, bishop... Sorry, not... Am I worried by bishop g4? Yeah, maybe. Then queen c4, queen b5. Yeah, I don't like that so much. What about knight f5? Nope. h3, knight a5, knight f5. Hmm. It does look like he is getting ready to play knight a5 here. Gonna just go h3 and wait to see what he does. Because if he goes knight a5, then maybe knight f5. I've, actually, I've got just knight takes e5 there, so forget all of that. Alright, now knight h4 should be safe. Trying to speed up a little bit now. Uh, so if knight takes e4, I've got queen takes e4, defending this knight on h4. And against most other moves, I'm going to bring a knight into f5. And I was listening to some commentary recently where people were basically saying that um, if you can get a knight to f5, that's often worth a pawn. And I think that's, you know, largely accurate in this position. Which knight do I want to go there? I think I want this knight so that perhaps I can bring my queen to g3. In some positions. And this does allow me to sidestep the um, potential skewer of bishop c4. Skewing the queen to the rook. Picking up the exchange. And it sets up my own little bag of tricks. Namely the most obvious one is knight takes h6. Pawn takes, queen takes f6. Nabbing at least a pawn and blowing my opponent's king wide open. Now, hmm, this reminds me of a daily puzzle tactic. But is there an actual win here? Well, queen g3 is a pretty sensible move. I can grab a pawn, bishop takes a4. I'm also going down to a minute here, so I really need to speed this up. 
Ah, uh, there's no devastating thing in this position. Just queen g3. King h7 I'm kind of expecting here. And then do I just grab the pawn? Okay, he goes there. Um, 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 um. Okay. I was starting to consider f4, but that move's not even legal. So I'm just going to take this pawn. Down to 38 seconds, so really looking to speed this up. You know, to lose one game on time is unfortunate. To lose two games on time could be considered careless. That's an interesting set of moves from my opponent. Can I go crazy here? I'm not going to go crazy here. Can I go crazy here? Let's go crazy. Ah, uh, this move was too fun not to play. Because I realised I could take this off and even potentially go for this check. But if I take on e5 straight away, he's got f6. So let's just take that off. And the big idea of taking there is so that my rook on f1 is undiscovered and defending the uh, rook on a1. So that nabbed me some material, I think, with that pawn on e5 still on pre. I am up two pawns. And surely it is only going to get better if I can just hold on with the amount of time. Uh, down to, at the moment, 16 seconds against uh, 25 seconds. Uh, right, let's just take that off. Let's just use some of that technique that help. This technique is not going well. Let's run away, guys. Bring a rook in. And maybe checking on d8. I'm down to six seconds. It might be a second loss on time. Oh, he takes it. Bring the knight back. All right, we're getting some serious pre-moving going here. Pawn moves up. Let's take that off. And bishop there. Pushing some pawns here, guys. It's time for hashtag push a pawn. And we win on time! Oh, there, there it wasn't so much my chess skills in evidence. Uh, as the final position is it's kind of interesting actually I think if I don't play h5 and I go king here I should be winning after this kind of sequence of moves but uh all right well we're going to carry on with this matchup uh, since it's now one all with both players having lost on time and yeah I'm still playing slowly um, obviously the Sicilian didn't work out so well or oh, it did, but, you know, I was in unfamiliar territory. So let us try a French defence with one of my favourite lines, the 3A6 one. And are we going to see an early G5? Well, yes, we are. We have got a, quif a swift answer to that question. So, yeah, pawns being pushed both in the ending and in the uh, opening here. Here it's Gary the G-pawn. And my opponent does go for one of the more critical moves... Uh, in the position as we do see pawns on the wing traded for uh, pawns in the center but where is my king going to end up that is a question I don't yet have the answer for my opponent defends this pawn on c5 okay what am I doing with the rest of my pieces bishop g7 seems sensible now normally white plays f three or f4 around about here but my opponent chooses to issue that in favor of other things hmm where do i want my queen where do i want all of my pieces here queen g5 f4 takes takes queen e3 check king h1 knight g4 okay this move looks like a lot of fun because if he doesn't go f4, then I'm starting to get a massive hack ready with h4 and g3. And if he does play f4, I've got some lines involving check, uh, involving taking, check on e3, and a knight coming into g4. I mean, I'm not 100% convinced by all of these, but they look like exactly the kind of chess that uh, we want to have here on Hack Attack. c4. Okay, well, there was a well-known saying that an attack on the wing should be met with a counter-attack in the centre. So, props to my opponent for going about that in 
you know, very instructive fashion. All right, let's bring another knight into the action. I also have to try and work out where my king is going. Because it's probably not going king side. All right, I think I want to recapture with the knight here. Keeping this E file closed so my king's still relatively safe. Ooh, but having said that, a knight lands on E4. And I think he's eyeing up the juicy D6 square. So let's just drop this queen back. He's going to play knight d6 check. I tuck the king across to f8. And we have craziness on the board in this third game. Here on chess.com. Alright. So I'm still looking to go h4. I'm still looking to go knight f4. And I'm also... Looking to keep a really close eye on the clock. In fact, I'm even going to just move my microphone just the tiniest bit. So that uh, there's no way it can obscure my view of the clock. Rookie 1. Now, knight f4 is tempting here. Or just h4. I like h4 a lot. I mean, it's hard for it to be a bad move. And in the interests of, you know, playing reasonable moves quickly, I'm just going to have it on the board. Now, I'm probably lining up G3 rather than H3, but both are options I'm considering. Look at this. Harry and Gary pushing themselves down the board in aid of a massive kingside hack. Where's my king going to go? It's safe enough on F8 for the time being. All right. Does that change anything? Can I go knight F3 check? Pawn takes, pawn takes, king there. I don't think so. All right, knight f4. Does that make any sense? Maybe, but what about g3? g3 is my number one choice of move, and I'm going to go for it. Let's just have open lines here. 49 seconds against 42. I have that slight lead on the clock in game number three, but danger all over the board with both kings. Uh, very vulnerable to a lot of things. All right, he attempts to block things off. I think I'm going to bring a knight in. Just going to try and swarm around his king until bad things happen to it. Um, where, where's that? Maybe knight into d3 is a useful idea here. Just attempting to take some dark squares and get a few tactics rolling here. Opponent down to less than 20 seconds. Are we going to have a hack attack entirely full of games where someone loses on time? I am going to, after this game, try and switch back to the time limit of 3 minutes plus 2 seconds a move. My opponent gives up a piece. Is it in desperation or is he winning this piece back on uh, e5? I think I can take here and defend... Opponent down to less than five seconds. Do I have a nice finish here? Bishop d4 doesn't work. Maybe just f3? Is there a nice finish with... Knight takes there. Not that I can see. Let's just play this. Queen d8 check. I'm meeting with king g7. And that should be pretty much it. With my opponent running out of time. And there we go. Well, a slightly strange start to hack attack, but that was definitely the most aggressive of all the games. I'm really happy with that one. We got the G pawn going down the board, the H pawn going down the board, and yeah, even though he lost on time, I think it's pretty much over here. Black's just a piece up for nothing. All right, I am 